Fiddle 101, a class for the beginner. Let's jump right in. In today's class, we're going to be learning the first step of playing the fiddle, which is how to hold the fiddle. We're going to be learning both bow hold and fiddle hold. We'll do them separately before trying to balance both. So to begin with our fiddle, we want to make sure our posture is good. So either sitting or standing, you're going to have a straight back, straight neck, and keep your shoulders down. It's a big tendency that people will raise their shoulders or turn their neck in order to hold us, but we want to keep that same straight posture when we're playing. So with the posture as yourself first in mind, we're just going to add the fiddle to this. So I'm going to take the fiddle. I have a shoulder rest on the back of my fiddle. This is um, helpful. It has a rubber grip, so it helps keep the fiddle from sliding around. So I'm taking this fiddle and I'm just going to place it on top of my shoulder and I'm going to have it so that the end of the fiddle is pressed against the side of my neck here. So it's nice and snug like that. And then I'm going to move my neck, but being very careful, I'm not going to crunch my neck, I'm not going to twist my neck, I'm just going to imagine that this fiddle is a very hard pillow, and I'm going to rest my head here. So my head is just coming to lay against the fiddle, and I can feel that the edge of the fiddle, the edge of the chin rest here, that little lip that comes up is going to hook behind the back of my jawbone, just there. So when my fiddle is resting on my shoulder, pressed against my neck, jawbone on the chin rest, and I'm resting my head. When you have that correct, you should then be able to release with both of your hands and your fiddle's not going to fall. So it's not going to slump way down like that. You're not going to have it so squeezed that it's coming way up like that, it's just going to stay in that same position with your head resting there. Now our left hand, what we do with our left hand is quite important. If you were to try just laying your hand by your side, I know you won't see my hand when I do this, but if my hand is just down by my side, the position it's in is like so. I have a straight wrist like this, straight thumb, and my fingers are curling just a little bit like this. Imagine my arm is just straight and hanging down like that. Now, when I go to move my hand to hold the fiddle, first of all, I'm not holding the fiddle with this hand. It's all being held with the pressure here. But when I go to raise my hand up, I want to keep that same position. So I'm continuing to have a straight line from my elbow all the way until where my fingers begin to turn, to curl. And on the back of my hand, I also have this straight thumb. So it's important to not either bend your thumb back, you're not overextending it, and you're also not making a corner with your thumb. So it's just that relaxed, straight uh, position like so. Then, the next thing to note with this hand is that there are two points of contact for my fingers. The one is with my index finger, also known as my first finger. This knuckle, somewhere, well, depending on the size of your hand, somewhere between this knuckle and right here in this space, you're going to have that all the way at the very end of the fingerboard. There's a little piece of wood that stands up a little bit. It's called the nut, and I'm going to have my finger resting against that as I play. So that is my anchor point, and I know from that where to how far I need to stretch my fingers to play a note. That's the first contact point for my hand. The other is with my thumb on the back of the fiddle. It's just going to rest there against the back, not coming down beneath, not sticking up above, just resting against the back. And I'm keeping it so that it's flat with the top of the fingerboard here. So it's not going to stick up above that and not be way down low, just right about uh, flush with the top of the fingerboard. And that is how you hold the fiddle. Now, the bow, I think, is even trickier in some ways than the fiddle. Um, when you're a fiddle player, you're really playing two instruments. You're playing the fiddle and you're playing the bow as well. So there's a lot involved with how to hold the bow. 
And there is a lot of um, different thought and interpretation about how to hold the bow as well. But I'm going to show you the way that I like to, to hold it. So to start with, you have to make sure your hand is completely loose. So I always begin just shaking my hand a little bit, making sure it's uh, flexible and I'm not holding any tension in it. So that nice loose bow uh, right hand. And then I'm just going to take that same hand, I'm stabilizing the bow right now with my left hand so that I don't start with tension trying to hold it. So right hand is loose and I'm just going to take it and flop it across the stick here. So again, I'm not yet holding the bow, I'm just resting my hand there. And sometimes that can be a hard thing to do because as soon as you make contact, everything starts to tighten and you want to hold things and put all the pressure in this hand. So even just, if you need to do that a few times, shake out your hand and practice resting it, just laying your hand against the stick there. It's crossing right about at this point um, on my fingers. If I flip that over, you can see that's about where the crossing point is. And from that, I only have to change two fingers in order to hold the bow. The first finger that I'm going to move is my pinky. I'm just gonna take it and instead of having it draping across the bow, like I do with my other fingers, I'm gonna pull it back and curl it so that it's just resting on top of the stick, like so. That's gonna to help to naturally tilt my hand a little bit as I'm playing. If my hand is complete, or if my fingers are making a right angle here with the bow, then as I bow, I would end up trying to bow like this. It's very hard to turn your wrist um, this way smoothly. And so by having my pinky curled, it bumps that hand so that it slightly tilts this way. And if you've ever knocked on a door, you can imagine this motion is much easier than this motion. I don't know anybody that knocks on a door like this. <laughs> so having that uh, pinky curled is just enough to tilt our hand so that as we're bowing, we're using this motion instead of this one. So that's the first finger that moves, our pinky. It's gonna come and rest on top. And then the next one is our thumb. This one's pretty important um, because this is the only um, opposite force that we have in our hand, the thumb. Everything else is pushing the bow in this direction and our thumb is holding it back. So our thumb, we're going to make a corner with that thumb. You can see here, it's just like a sharp corner right where the knuckle is. And you can place it in, a, in two different places. When I was first learning, my teacher had me place it here so that your thumbnail is pressed against this piece, this is called the frog. So it's pressed against the bottom of the frog. And so in that way, you're not coming in contact with the horse hair and you have a little bit more of an open hand when playing like that. So that would be option one for how to hold a bow. And when you, uh, you can try that for a little while, remember thumbnail against the frog. You don't wanna have the pad of your thumb there that starts to bend it backwards. Um, and that adds tension to the inside of your hand here. So bending your thumb like that, option one. The other option still includes this bent thumb, but instead of having it there um, at the bottom of the frog, I'm actually going to, let's see if I can flip it this way so you can see, I'm moving my thumb to rest against the stick here and the leather. And you might even be able to see on my bow, it's worn away, that's where my uh, the contact point for my thumb is coming in. And so it's pressed there, which actually makes my thumb come against the horse hair. You can see also that's where, um, it's a little grungy looking, Ugh. but that's where my thumb comes against the horse hair as I'm playing. So that gives you a little more of a closed feeling in your hand. So sometimes even depending on the size of your hand, you might want the more open bow hold or a little more closed. So I like to have it so that my thumb is there um, against the stick rather than against the frog. And then either way, your fingers are draping over and the pinky is curling up. And that's how you hold your bow. And then once you have that, try and do them both at the same time. 
And then you've at least made the appearance of playing the fiddle. Hi there, Dakota Carper here again. And I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to join me for this Fiddle 101 class. Find out more online at dakotacarper.com or go to my folk music school, which is The Cat and the Fiddle, and the website thecatandthefiddlewv.com. You can also find more lessons like this on patreon.com slash dakotacarper or on my YouTube channel. See you next time. <laughs>